we are back and you know how the song goes once again and we're back, back my friend. friend once again we're <laughs> back my friend once again we're back, back my friend. friend and we thank you for tuning in hey episode nine bro yes man. one two three four five six seven eight nine episode nine man hey man, man. We, we're one episode away from ten Bam. so hey man that shows i did learn a little something in kindergarten hey, we, hey you said a second grade teacher said what now <laughs> said i wouldn't be nothing but here i am today <laughs> doing a podcast <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was watching the thing. They say everybody who came up in the hip hop era uh, is, is so quick to say uh, somebody told them they'll never be something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no way. <So, laughs> that that might be true. Let me think about that. I think everybody has that chip on their shoulder. Oh yeah, you, for sure. You got, you got to walk away, man, with a chip, man. You got to take a chip. So look, let's just dig right into it. All right, let's go. Um, before we even get into the sports aspect, yes, right, I want to talk about. An Atlanta legend, yes, a hip hop legend. So yes, speaking about hip hop, yes, uh, we got the news today, like literally today of this taping, yes, the day that we are recording, got the news on the way here that Rico Wade passed away. Rico Wade, man, he's a big part of my life. I would talk about some stories on that, but yeah, man, like that's sad, you know, like big Atlanta legend history to start. I could say the start of the movement to bring Atlanta hip hop into mainstream. Yeah, so I mean. Like just being somebody who listened to hip hop, who rode to hip hop, who ended up getting into the hip hop industry and becoming successful. Like just tell the people a little bit about what Rico Wade means to you from that aspect, and you can speak about from someone okay. being from Atlanta. Man, when I think of Rico Wade, I think of the the scene of him in Players Ball when he's like, oh, the play, you know, like when he starts it off and he has no shirt on, he's walking around eating a bowl of cereal in the in the in the projects. I just I just remember that, and then I think about the. Um, the billboard he had in New York, uh, New York Times Square with his hands like that. I think about that. And then I just think about how he pushed um, Outkast and Goody Mob to become great. You know, he, he, he they had a basement called a dungeon and they used to go over there and, um, you know, battle it out, man. And he used to say, he used to tell me, him and, um, him and Yoda, he used to tell me um, they would really like, if you, your verse isn't good, you're not getting on a song. Mm. And so they would just go outside and and keep writing the verses. Not good enough. Not good enough. Mm. Not good enough. Go back outside and rewrite it. And so they was battling who's going to go first, who's going to go second, who's going to go third. And sometimes they didn't make it. That's why Cool Breeze was on a lot of songs because he was out rapping all them ninjas. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. And so um, I just remember those stories. And um, just like before I met him, just like, you know, just I just remember hearing Witch Doctor Holiday on the MTV Awards when it went to commercial and you heard it in the crowd. I'm like, oh, man, it's something from Atlanta playing. Yeah. Every day is a holiday. Yeah. And I just remember before it was mainstream and yeah. Atlanta artists, I just remember I was so excited. Had that pride. Yeah, I had that pride. And then I remember, um, you know, at the Source Awards, Andre 3000, you know, he's a part of all that. Like, I, I feel like that whole that whole crew um, um, Rico Wade, the, the, all the all the producers, um, Yoda, um, Craig. I know I'm missing people, man, but all y'all, man, was 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 a part of um, organized noise. You know, organized noise. That that was his that was his um, thing, and he he was the first one out of Atlanta getting thirty forty million dollar budgets from labels. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I got a chance to meet him, 2008 nine. Um, you know, we had just signed a deal and. That you know, that was when they were saying BLB kind of like reminded them of Andre three thousand. Yeah. You know, he had that comparisons, and a lot of um, the organized noise camp they took they took a gravitation towards BLB. We got a chance to um, to go to his um, his house over there um, where Hank Aaron used to live over there in um, Southwest Atlanta off Childress. And what was cool was Future was there before Future was Future. Mm. He, he you know he was he's related to Rico Wade. Okay. And um, okay. He was going by Meathead at the time. He was in there, and, and um, Bob and him did a couple songs. Uh, we, you know, it was just amazing soaking it up, you know, watching him. Man. <laughs> we, uh, and Rico was one day, we was just um, all chilling. All of a sudden, he just dropped to the ground, did about 50 push-ups. All right, let's go. <laughs> and I just really always had good energy, man, and yeah. good stories. It's, it's so much I could say uh, with the stories, but I just remember that. And then I remember um, a couple years later, you know, hooking up with them, um, going over songs. And just talking and, and 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 I remember Bob and Big Boy did a song, and Rico was there, and just the stories, man. He's got so many stories, a plethora of knowledge, man. Just if you had a chance to meet him, man, he was very positive, very good, good dude. You know, man, man, like 
I appreciate you sharing all that. Of course, you know, I, I know a lot of these stories, a lot of things mm -hmm. that, that you're telling, but for the people to be able to hear that. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, there are a lot of people around the world, I'm talking about around the globe, who know about Atlanta hip-hop, yeah. who know about Southern hip-hop, and know about the impact that Atlanta has had yes. all around the world. But sometimes, depending on what generation you came from, they might not know about it. Mm -hmm. And so you just gave people like some insight into one of the men who was one of the leaders and one of, one of the trailblazers mm -hmm. in helping the city of Atlanta become the city that it is when it comes to music. Yeah, and one thing I'm thinking about, um, our producer Aaron, he just said, man, you know they're going to have a big celebration here. I'm, I'm definitely going to show up and go to the candlelight, whatever events they have, and show my love uh, for him. Um, if you got a chance to know him, well, I got a chance to know him, both, you know, on, on on the back end of, you know, the success of Outkast. So I could just say he was humble, man. He was nice. He had talked to you. He didn't have no ego with me. You know, I never seen that, that side. I don't, I don't know if he had an ego with people, but with me, you know, being a brand new, fresh, you know, person in the music industry, he showed me love, made me feel equal. You know, I didn't have any negative things that I saw about Rico. Rico was cool as hell. That's dope, mm -hmm. man. That's dope, man. Well, I won't dig too much into uh, – my my stories, I don't have a whole lot of stories really involving Rico. I met Rico a couple times because, uh, you know, I was a part of the Attic crew. Oh, yeah. So it was times that me and Pretty Ken, Freaky T, you know, and the guys, we would go through. And I met him a couple times, but I can't say that I know him. Like, we were friends or that we know each other. But I have so much respect for what he did, for his leading. Uh, I mean, him, Ray, Sleepy, all the guys from the dungeon. Mm -hmm. You know, and to know that he was like, like the – the, the guy with a lot of the ideas and a lot of the force yeah. and a lot of the vision. Yeah, really you know a lot I mean? of vision. Like, and so, you know, I hate that he passed. Uh, it's a sad day for Atlanta Hip Hop. But like you said, in time, everybody will get together and everybody will celebrate his life and yeah. the impact that he had yeah. to help bring Atlanta. And there's some Atlanta. powerful people behind that movement. You know, I think uh, uh, Shanti Dyes, all that, they're going to do something 100%. nice nice for him. You know, everybody's going to come together. 100%. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, rest in power, Rico. And, uh, man, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, let's sport. do it, man. So what, what are we talking about today? Man, well, hey, we are right here at a very pivotal moment in the year that a lot of people tune into, and that is the NFL Draft. Man, man, I'm, I'm excited, and, I mean, you know, since I do want to, you know, say we're Atlanta Falcons fan, I'm excited to see what we're going to do. Um, the draft is, you know – um, when this comes out, it's like this week, you know, this stuff, you know, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited, man. Um, I don't know what, what the Falcons are going to do. We're sitting at eight. Um, I kind of hope we trade back. I feel like the person we're targeting, we could trade back a couple slots, get some extra picks and still get that person. Who, do you, who do you feel like we're targeting? Uh, what, what position? Um, I feel, I feel, I feel, just I feel like, um, D line, the Alabama, um, linebacker. I think we're looking at him. I know me and you talked about, um, um, the 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 possibility of us draft, draft, uh, drafting Brock Bowers, which you're not with, but I'm kind of with that. And I want to see where the LSU receiver drops to. I don't know if he will drop that far. Neighbors, what's his name? Yeah, yeah uh -huh. I, I want to see, but I hope we either get a D line or one of them, um, the receiver, if neighbors, and um, and Brock Bowers. So if, if we can get one, I'll be happy. Okay, I mean, and what if they go O line? Well, what what if we go O line? I mean, I won't be mad at O line like the, like like that's that's yeah 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 like long as they get a starter that's gonna be here ten years, I ain't gonna be mad at that at all because I feel like we got all the um, skill players. From we a receiver, you know, we, you get, I always have another receiver, but uh, O line just gonna make it more solid to where he can get the ball out. Okay, yeah. I mean, hey, I mean, well, they, have you heard that they just spent they just spent like a, a what one hundred and eighty million dollars on a torn Achilles. So they need to have protection hey, this before, a, before he tears the other one and gets slammed on his neck I did, in, in front of Papa Cousin. I, I did cousin some, Pop. I forgot. Cousin, cousin Pop. Pop. <laughs> did somebody get mad at you for saying uh, a broken Achilles? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I said broken kid, which they know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking, man. Broke, busted, and disgusted, man. Yeah, man. You know, uh, okay. So, hey, let's, let's, let's throw out a hypothetical. All right. Falcons trade back. Yes. All right, Falcons trade back. Let's just say... 12, 13, pick up an extra second round pick. I love that. What do you want to see them? Die? Okay, if all three on the board, the receivers on the board, the defensive oh. end is on the board, the tight end is on the board, what 
would you pull the trigger on? Okay, if the LSU in, in if, if the LSU receiver is there and the linebacker is there and Brock Byers is there. Well, you just gonna you gonna force Brock. Nah, Byers. nah, nah. I'm just saying. I'm saying <laughs> my 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 heart is gonna go with Brock Bowers. Oh, but my but my brain, if my Falcons wanna win, is gonna go with the LSU receiver, man. So if the LSU receiver, I hope we would get him. But if we got any of those other two, I wouldn't be mad. I mean, now there are other players. No, nah, there are. That, there are. That, and that could that, be great. That are yeah. out there. You know, we have the pass rusher from Florida State. Yes. His name Jared Verse. We also have a pass rusher from UCLA that a lot of people are looking at. Speaking of UCLA, didn't, didn't Tech McKinley? You know, so you don't want anybody? No, no, no. So it's a it's a point I'm bringing up. Okay, yeah. So, Tech, so Tack McKinley so, came from UCLA. So, so when we drafted him, and it's funny you said UCLA because I was about to go with this point next. I just looked at a uh, old old draft when Tack McKinley came out. Do you know who we passed on? Oh yeah, I mean they could have stayed where they were and gotten T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt. Are we traded up to get McKinley? Yes. Oh, I did. Yeah. We could have gotten T.J. Watt. The Falcons uh-huh. traded up ahead of the Cowboys. Uh, when you look back at some of the old things uh-huh. that came out right after that, it seemed like the Cowboys wanted to draft Tack, Tack McKinley. Falcons traded up in front of the Cowboys, drafted Tack McKinley. The Steelers, in turn, ended up getting T.J. Watt. And, and, and that was at the end of the draft, right? The well, Steelers the first, got him. First round. That, okay. No, I'm saying it was like the end of the first yeah, round. Yeah, yeah. It was getting. It was in the twenties. Yeah. Somewhere. Now, if we do trade back and 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 we get a second round pick, an extra second round, you know who I want us to get, right? I know who I want us to get. I think. If, I think. If, I, if, I think if, it's the same. I think if, we're the same. If he's we there, have look, look, we have we have not talked about this, if, and if I know there, we're saying the same player. If he's there, who we talking about the Washington. I'm talking about Penny. Yes, man. I'm talking yes, about man. Penny yes, Jr. man. I hope we get him, man. Yes. And he can sit back and learn Please and come back. Please let him drop to the second round <laughs> and let the Falcons. Yes, get. man. I'm looking at that. I, I hope would that. love yeah. to have Michael Penix Jr. in an Atlanta. Falcons. Me too. Me too. But hey, a lot of people say the Falcons won't draft a black quarterback. Well, where are they getting this from, man? I don't know because Desmond Ritter was, was a black. black. He was black last year. I guess he's too light. You know, hey, but they won't draft that's a dark so, skin. That's what they say. A lot of people say mm-hmm. that they don't want a mixed. Like it's, it's it's funny the the times that we pick and choose to say when a person is black and when a person's is white. Yeah, black. yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I go through it all the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, like, and, and no, and all jokes aside, you know, what I mean, Aaron laughing from the back. <laughs> oh, you know, he gonna laugh. <laughs> but, but, but but all joke, but all jokes aside, you know, I, I know you do. I mean, yeah. I hear it. You know what I mean? I yeah. heard it over the years. Yes. And. I just don't understand how they just discount. They just took this man race card yes. and just threw it down the sewer. Yes. They just took his race card, be rich. They For sure. took it. For sure. They took it from Desmond Ritter, man. Hey, um, I saw something on Desmond Ritter um recently this week, and he was saying that um he, they asked him about the coach um coaches' comments about the quarterback play was a big reason why we didn't win. And he was like, Hey, you know, I on ten percent of what I did was mistakes, but it all wasn't on me. And I'm like, man, those 10% mistakes was really, really bad, bro. You lost us about Look, four games, bro. Let me tell you, man. I, 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 this might be a bad analogy. <coughs> but if a very good cook or a very good chef spends 90% of the time fixing a great meal, and then the 10% of the time that it takes to get it to the table, you drop it all on the floor, who's the person oh, to wow. blame? You fumble wow. it. You fumble it. You fumble the meal on, on the floor. The floor. <laughs> Who's the person to blame hey man, for it not being That is a meal? great analogy. Because that's you, Desmond Ritter. That's you. That is you. Perfect. Man, <laughs> hey, I, I, at that, what's next? That, that is you, Desmond That was perfect. Ritter. Well, well, I mean, I still want to talk about it from, from my perspective. All right. So we're sitting at eight. Yes. We're, we're sitting at number eight. Yes. Um, I really, I don't know if the Falcons can trade back. I really haven't looked at enough teams to mm-hmm. see who may be a prospect for trying yeah. to trade up. Like a lot of times we like to say, I, you you'll see a lot of people like, man, the Falcons better trade. I'm like, okay, you have to have someone to trade with. Mm-hmm. If they can trade back and pick up an extra second or extra third, I'm all for that. But yes. if not, I think the Falcons, in my opinion, need to go defense, or they need to pick up an old lineman. Mm-hmm. I mean, get another skill position player. I mean, that's that's cool. But are you gonna go four years in a row? And, 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 hey, my thinking may be flawed. I'm sure there are people who are going to say my thinking is flawed because you need to get the best player. Mm-hmm. But are you really going to go four years in a row on straight-up skill players in the first round with top ten picks? 
four years in a row. You know, I was listening to talk talk radio this week, and they were saying like is the defensive the defensive class this year is cool, but is it top ten worthy? Mm. Mm. So basically, they saying they're saying there are no Aaron Donalds out there. That's what I'm. That's that's what that's what the the. Quote unquote, I mean, and it, and it might be. Say, yeah. So they're saying they don't see any Nick Bosa's yeah, in the first yes, round. Yes. They don't see any Aaron Donalds. Yeah. In the they say it's very Hats. offensive top heavy in the, in the beginning. Hmm. Well, I mean, in that case, I mean, you don't need to reach at the same yeah. time. I don't want the Falcons to reach. But yeah. I, mean, I just want them to make a smart pick. Yes. I, I, I want with this pick, I want a player who can be in a Falcons uniform for 10, for plus, 10 year. plus years. Yes. And that's contributing. That's now, a starter. Now, now, hold up. What if? What if Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, drops to number eight? Oh, oh for sure. Now, for sure. Oh, so, are, are you going to kick Brock Bowers oh. out? Brock, you're gone. Bro. <laughs> I'm a, you're gone. Hey, man, you didn't just flip Brock hey, like a little hey, flea. Hey, man, did you see what he did against Georgia? If he wouldn't have got hurt, yes. Man, we probably wouldn't have went to the championship, and, man. Hey, and let me, so, okay, so look. I'm glad Beers brought that up because I want to give the fans some insight into the way old Trey Mines works. So just come, <laughs> come, come into my thought process for a second. Uh -huh. This is the type of person I am. I have so much respect, so much respect. Call me a homer all you want. I have so much respect for the University of Georgia and the University of Georgia football and uh -huh. the type of athletes and program they put out there, uh -huh. especially now that Kirby's here, mm -hmm. that when a player – Shows out against UGA, I feel good about that player yes. being successful yes. at the next level. Yes. So watching Marvin Harrison Jr. ball out against UGA, I mean, he couldn't be contained. Couldn't be stopped. He couldn't be stopped. And I mean, I like to be honest, had he stayed in the game, I'm not sure that UGA would have won that game. So I'm with you. Like, and plus, plus, he has been groomed. For this, his yes. father is a Hall of Fame. Wow, player. And, forgot and, about that. And, and what that does, I mean, everybody's different. Just because your parents did something doesn't mean you're gonna do something. But he's getting advice. He's getting pro advice. You know, not only how to train, how to take care of his body, how to handle things, how to be a professional, the way he should approach things. And, mm -hmm. and I, I don't, I don't ever think that's a bad thing mm -hmm. to have when you have a player. And, and I know I said this last a couple couple episodes ago. I remember I said um, some some experts were saying that um, Brock Byers was one of the top um, players in the draft, but Marvin Harrison has also been talked about that and that like the the very top player. But I think sometimes quarterbacks and the importance of that position makes them go higher than other positions like a Marvin Harrison or um, Brock Bowers. But definitely, if he's there, man, let's get him. Man, we have a whole new Julio on our hands. And like I said, man, that'll be four years in a row on skill play. Hey, I don't, but, I don't care about that one. But, man, I, I know I'm going to sound like I'm waffling. Yeah. But I, I just want them to make a smart decision yes. right here. This this is very pivotal to the success, in my opinion, Yes. of, of where they're headed. Because mm -hmm. they, they've shown that this is not a, a, a straight-up rebuild. Yes. The Falcons feel like they just need to reload, even yes. though – they need more than just a, a, a couple things to reload with. Yes. So they have to get this pick right. This they gotta this, get it this right. This will be the first pick under Coach Morris. The first first round. Coach pick Raheem. I thought you know I, I feel like looking at the moves. I mean, you know, going into the off season, I was hoping we get Bill Belichick, but I think that would have just been just because he did what he did. It probably would have hurt us in the long run, but. Looking at the moves he's made, looking at the young um, coordinators he, he has, and looking at the, um, the the feel of it, it feels exciting. It feels like we're going in the right direction. It feels like when Dan Quinn took over, you know, that type of direction with the Falcons. It feels like a, a breath of fresh air, a fresh new start. When we got um, when we got Arthur Smith, I didn't feel that. I wasn't happy with that hire. I, you know, I gave him a hard time, and I started liking him this this past year. I oh, start, yeah, you you were real hard. On oh yeah, yeah. And, and, go go ahead and tell the people nah, why why you said Arthur nah, Smith, why you knew Arthur Smith wouldn't be successful. Nah, you, you don't want to say nah, that. Nah, we're gonna keep. You don't want to say we got, that. We got kids. We got kids in the room. <laughs> yeah, we gonna keep that on the chat. We gonna keep that on on the chat. Yeah. 
<laughs> we gonna keep that one on we the set. Keep that on the oh, we got we got a chat with all our friends and homies, man. I was going in. I ain't gonna we lie. gonna keep that on. But the but chat. I will say, over the years, I've come to respect Arthur Smith, and, and and he was a decent hire. But I just never felt good about his direction, um, where he was going, and and hope, wish him luck in Pittsburgh. But I feel good about Raheem. I really do. I feel like it's going in the right direction. It feels good. It feels like we have a chance to do something. Well, I'm going to be honest. I want to see the black coach succeed. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I can't say that Raheem Morris was on my list. He wasn't on my of, list. When, I was surprised. I yeah. was surprised. I'm going to be honest. I, I can't say that he was on my list of coaches to bring in, but now, now that he's here and I've had a chance to really – because when, when he was here before and he took over for Dan Quinn once, Dan Quinn and uh, and Thomas Dimitrov got fired, um, I looked at Raheem as he was here part of the problem. Yes, you know, so me I, too. I, so I'm going to be honest. I didn't give him a fair shot. Me neither. I did not give him a fair shot. Oh. But when he got rehired, I started really paying attention to him listening. I started, I'm, I'm sorry, I started paying attention to him talking. Yeah. And, yeah. and he, he says he says a lot of things that, that you can get behind from a motivational yeah. standpoint. Yeah, and then when he was coach at Tampa Bay, he was young. He was in his 30s, man. Mm. I was like, dang. And he came with Gruden really speaks highly of him. You know, um, well, Raheem was probably in the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> man, he in the lemon pepper with Lou. He's out there with Lou. <laughs> I don't like, listen. These are just jokes. I don't know any of these things yeah. to be true. Raheem Morris seems like a very uh, faithful family man. I don't know if he was single then yeah. or married, but yeah. I can just imagine being in my early thirties. If he was single, down in Tampa Bay, Florida, yeah. head coach of an NFL team, yeah. that man was balling. Yes, yeah, he balling on a 30th <laughs> flow. But, you know, I was thinking about, like, before before we hired him, like I was like, Belichick, what went wrong? I heard some things with Rich McKay. He had some some differences. And then after that, I wanted um, I wanted Harbaugh. And so I was like, we're going to get one of them because I know, I know I was like, I wanted him. And, you know, now looking back at things and, and having this, um, everything settle in, I think Raheem was a good choice for Atlanta. I, I don't don't get me wrong. I wanted Harbaugh, I wanted Belichick, and but we got what we got. I feel like um, I feel like Arthur Blank had wanted Bill Belichick, but he listened to the people that was around him, and I like that about a boss that the people that can that, that that that's in power that he trusts the people he brought in, and and he listened. So for whatever reason we didn't get Belichick, and you know I know I know for a fact that Arthur Blank wanted him. And I, I'm just, I ain't like I know him, whatever. I just, I just see how he moved, and he had him on his yacht, had him this or that. There's a lot of things, you know, don't, don't normally happen like that. When he's on the yacht, it's gonna happen. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, he brought the man. To yeah, the yeah. But look, so we we've been so Falcon heavy on this. So if you guys got to sum up what we just said, we are looking for just the best player available. Yeah, literally like, in the comments for, for the Falcons. Now I do want to say this: why why we still on draft? We need to touch on every, every, everyone else. So. We talked a lot about what would happen with Justin Fields. Right? Yeah, yes. It's, it's been decided. Justin Fields is in pitch gone. Right now. And it looks like the Bears are honed in, targeted. I mean, they have it decided. Caleb Williams. I with think the number one overall I, I, pick. I think that's where it's going. I think I heard Drake May may have something, but nah, I think I think I think it's Caleb Williams and we go, we shall see. I think Drake may stop. Uh, drop when Kendrick dissed Drake and they thought it was, it was him too. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> all, all of his stock dropped yeah, Drake, when, when Kendrick dissed Drake. Damn, man. Kendrick done, done, done brought down Drake, man. Drake Mays. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, hey. but Caleb Williams, man. Caleb Williams, man. But, you know, like, I know before this past year, it was a lock for sure. He won the Heisman, but for some reason, people said the kid had a bad year this past year. You know, compared to the year before. But talent don't change, man. You know, it's, it's it is what it is. I think the kid gonna be special, like a kind of like a Patrick Mahomes type of um, vein. That's that's where, in my opinion, the issue has been coming in. I think a lot of people here, he's gonna be like Patrick Mahomes. He he can do the off script stuff. He can. The play breaks down. He can make a throw here that maybe it didn't seem like he yeah. should make. He can throw the ball from an awkward position and still get there. He can throw the ball across his body. Yeah, you know, and they and they and they're looking like, hey, everyone's not gonna be Patrick Mahomes for sure. So, so I, I this is just my opinion. I think some of the experts are looking and saying, you guys can can you can try to get Patrick Mahomes again all you want. Yeah, but all these bad traits just because some of these things work out. Yeah, for Patrick Mahomes 
does not mean that another player coming in is going to be able to get away with the same thing. Yeah, for sure. Because no one is going to be – so, Patrick Mahomes. So, I think that's the knock on Caleb Williams from a lot of people. They they don't see the discipline. And, and the things he's getting praised for, because people think he's going to be Patrick Mahomes, other people are sitting back and saying, no, those are actually flaws. Man, what's up with, 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 with Chicago and their quarterbacks? Like – they, they who, who's the best quarterback in Chicago Bear history? What is it? Is it Jim McMahon, Jay Cutler? In my opinion, it has to be Jay Cutler or Jim McMahon. Yeah, I, I would go with talent wise. Had to be Jay Cutler. Yeah, yeah, um, had to be. But like the la- they had, but Trub- Trub- Trubisky, mm-hmm. um, um, Fields. Mm-hmm. Like I don't is, is that just the quarterback? I mean, Rich, Rich Grossman was the quarterback Grossman? when they went to the Super Bowl. Man, I don't know, man. It's always I, – I, I hope that, that, that the kid gets a good shot up in Chicago because it seems like they don't never know how to do deal with quarterbacks there. Man, why, why does that happen? Like, and I know we kind of going down uh, different paths of what we're talking about, but that's how our, our conversation yeah. to sometimes. How, how does that happen when it seems like certain franchises – seem to struggle all the time in certain areas. Yeah. Like what 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 is it? Like <laughs> the Falcons. Defense. The Falcons defense, struggle with defense, defense especially defensive line. line. It's always been struggle. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just <laughs> I don't know. And 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 the Bears, the Bears keep a good defensive line. They keep a they good defensive line. They can't get a quarterback. We had Vic and then Matt Ryan. Yeah. And and now um yeah. <laughs> And not goofy. <laughs> <laughs> one eighty, but we got we got we got Kirk one eighty back though. One eighty, man. man. One eighty. I think he's gonna do good. I think Kirk Cousins is gonna show out, man. Man, I'm calling him Kirk one eighty, man. <laughs> Why? Kirk, hey, man, because he got paid one eighty, man. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk one eighty, man. I was thinking like three sixty. I'm like, what? So he's doing a one eighty. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk one eighty, man. I got it. All right, well, he better earn <laughs> 180, it. One eighty, man. The, when, but why, why does that seem to I, I don't know. certain franchises? It does. I don't know. Like seem, seem to like, like okay, like take the Ravens. I, I think no matter where the Ravens go, I think as long as my time on this earth is here, I think you're going to see tough linebacker play in yeah. defense yeah. And, and tough running from yeah. Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, for like, sure. And I understand it's an identity thing. Yeah, but for why, sure. why can't some people break the identity after years of seeing it doesn't work? Man, I don't know, man. I, I can't answer that question. I, I just like you think of Denver; they got good running backs. Um, you think of, you think of. Um, I don't know. I can't give you the answer. I wish I could. What do you think? You know what, man? Like I, I, I I've been thinking about this, and I haven't come to a conclusion. But it, it really is amazing to me how just some franchises, like it doesn't matter the sport. Yeah. Some franchises, no matter what. And no matter who's the owner at the time, mm-hmm. who's the GM at the time, no matter no matter the the generation mm-hmm. or the era, mm-hmm. some franchises seem to just get certain things right. Like no matter what in basketball, you know some star players are coming to play for the Los Angeles Lakers. Always. I, I don't care. At some Boston, point, they are going to have the number one. Two or three best player in the league. I agree that. playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, they make it happen at, all at, the time. At some point, yes. they, they they may go three, four years here and there, but at some point, they're going to get one of the top three best players in the league. Like at the Pittsburgh Steelers, for instance, <clears throat> they always have, have a, a tough defense. team, tough, tough defensive yeah. team. Yes, always. Yes, and, and and it takes on it takes on the identity of the city. Yes, as well. Yes. You know what I mean? Nah, for sure. Like and so, so I mean, I don't understand how some franchises just can't break because as we see the the, the franchises we're praising for uh-huh. good things, some just cannot seem to break the bad things. Yeah, for sure. I agree. You know, so uh, I, great. I, I I don't know, man. Yeah. Hey, um, on another point, man, are you you, you done talking about the draft? You want to talk about some more? I mean, just 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 go with that. We'll, we'll, we'll let it free flow for. A while. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, um, what do you think about the OJ news, man? Like, yeah, OJ passed. Yeah, let everybody know. This week as well. Yeah. OJ Simpson passed. I don't know what side of the OJ Simpson uh, club you're on. There are some people who they just let OJ be OJ, and we don't have opinions either way. And there are some people who really hate hated OJ. Yeah. Well, well, uh, 
I, I you know, anytime I hear someone passes, you know, I, I think about their family. I think about their children, yeah. their grandchildren, wh- whatever they may have. I don't, I don't know like OJ's entire history as far as all his children yeah. and, and possible grandchildren or whatnot, yeah. or his relationship with them. Yeah. But I, I think about the families. That's the first thing, first and foremost. And uh, I mean, OJ was a—he was a—he was, a, he, he was a, a magnetic figure, <clears throat> no matter how you want to look at it. Do, do you do you remember what you was doing when he was in the Bronco and he was on? Uh, on the run, I probably was high. <laughs> hey, that's what. <laughs> hey, you know, like, because I, 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 I was, I, I was, I was a teenager at the time. I was, I was more than likely I was high. Hey, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I was high. <laughs> <laughs> I would bet money that I was high. Hey, let, let me say this. Let me say this, man. And, and I'm glad that you was high. <laughs> but <laughs> that day when he was on the run, I that that's just I'm thinking about it now. That goes to show you how great lawyers are. Cause I knew he was guilty. This man on the run in the highway, being chased by a gazillion police cars. He's in a white Bronco. <laughs> hey man, people went out. This was before social media. Yeah, people went out to the bridges and saw he was coming their way and had signs. Like go, go J. Jay Run, go. go to- <laughs> yeah, man. Like that was crazy. And it's like that moment for him running told me he was guilty. That, that, and it's like how lawyers able to flip stuff around. It goes to show you our society. And I don't know if he was guilty or not guilty. And I heard that he um, he made everybody All we say, know is he was acquitted. He was acquitted. For that. But, for, he, but he ended up going to prison. Hey, it's how God works. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and and he, I heard that he made all his family members sign NDAs before he, before he died. I heard he told what happened on his deathbed. So I don't know. We what? Said, yes. I haven't heard anything. I, I've been, I, I, that's all I've been seeing, man. OJ died. He talk, he, t- he confessed on his man, deathbed. somebody <laughs> done put that on social media, man. Hey, man. Some, somebody hey, man. put that foolishness hey, out. Hey, There's no hey, way in the world. Where a hit dog barks, what is it? A hit dog hollers or something to man, it, man. Man, there is no way in the world. I just, they're, they're not going to get me with that one. Yeah. I, I am not falling for that. I'm, I'm not falling for that. I'm man. just not. You know, OJ, man, he was like, do you remember the Hertz commercial? Of course. Like, yeah, when I think yeah. of OJ, that's the thing I think of most. I yeah. think of him running through the airport. airport jumping over chairs, yeah. have a suitcase. Yeah, that, that's what I think of. And he, and, he, and he was considered, some people consider him the greatest running back of all time. But My, my I, uncle, shout out to my uncle Jay. He says OJ was hands down wow. the, the greatest running back. I wish I got a chance to see him play. I saw highlights. I saw a bunch of highlights of him. Yeah, he said OJ was, was that guy. Yeah. He said, oh, and he just quit right in the middle of his life. He just retired. Man, be honest, I, I wish I had the knowledge yeah. on that to know exactly the, the way he retired and the way he left the league. I, I don't. I was I was a kid when OJ left the league, so yeah. I, I don't know. So so you said like he got acquitted for the for the for the um for the the, the killing of his wife and um and and, and her lover. Ron yeah, Ron Goldman. I heard, I heard that um he got acquitted, but he you, you know you said he got um later on down the line. He got put in jail, but did you know what he got put in jail for? Yeah, somebody was selling some of his memorabilia, and he went and then got it okay. back, and they, they had a firearm. And yeah. So, so the question is, if if during the time you're you're going against trial, you know, what he got acquitted for, and a lot of his personal items, you know, things that you you know rushed for two thousand yards in, um, you know, signed jerseys, footballs that you had, you know, stuff that meant a lot to you. You know, somehow it was, you know, it, it, it got gone from your possession. Either you had to sell it for this or that, you I know. Somebody stole it. Oh, they st- I don't know the. the Because if somebody the, bought it, it would really would, would be crazy to go down. So and so they acquired it. They acquired it um, legally. Right. OK. So I guess he wanted it back. I guess, you know, they weren't. Having it or trying to charge him an arm and a leg, so he went down with a, with a gun, gave my stuff back, took it, and got put in jail for armed robbery of his stuff. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. It's his stuff. It's not fair. I don't think it's fair for for you to go get your stuff that you want it's back. Not your stuff. So that's the that's there you go. So this is the argument. <laughs> there we go. It's not your stuff. So so I I understand. I understand. So let's say you acquired it. Right, you acquire OJ Simpson stuff. He hits you back, and he wants his stuff back. Give me money for it. But I think I, I, give me at least double what I paid for it, and I'll let you get it. Like you're gonna have to pay me something. Yeah, you're gonna because I more than likely didn't get it just to keep it. Yeah, because if I did, why, why did I have it somewhere where OJ could have access to come try to take it back? Yeah, 
if I got it to keep it, it would be in my home <laughs> somewhere or in, or in maybe I have some kind of business. Uh, but more than likely, you're looking to sell it. But the people that had it were um, were people that were in that business, that were in the business of selling sports, sports okay, items. Okay, well, pay, yeah, pay me double for it. Yeah. I think that's probably what they said, and he won with it. <laughs> pay, pay me double for it, and, and you can have it. Yeah. You, you, you're going you're gonna to definitely pay me more than what I paid. Yeah, for. yeah. You, you need to give me something, and rightfully so. You should even come to me and say, hey, man, I'll give you extra for it. Because I, I didn't steal it. I didn't take it. If I acquired it legally, yeah. come on now. Well, rest and, in peace. And, and you know what the people probably said to him. What? You come on, you you try that murder shit with me, OJ. <laughs> 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 you know how men talk to other men yeah. when there's a very tense yeah, yeah. situation. You know that probably yeah. came out. Yeah. Come on, come do it to me. Come do it to me. <laughs> Get the strap. <laughs> Get the knife. Give me the gloves. Let's go. <laughs> OJ said this time, I ain't getting the knife. Get the strap. Get the strap. <coughs> That's what he got. That's what he, he got. Said, Get the strap. But uh, but yeah, man, man. Like rest in peace, OJ. Uh, we know that at some point everyone has to leave here. Yes. Uh, including us. As yeah, man. Point. But but it's still it's still sad. And yeah. To hear, uh, especially with people who have influenced. Like now, I will tell you this. I do remember where I was when the verdict came. Man, and and I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to talk about that. It his his verdict and going out. It was really a black and white thing. It was a black and white thing, and and I remember white people was mad, 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 bro. Yes, super mad. And I just remember when Rodney King's verdict went out. Black people was super mad, mad, mad. And I think I can't say, but. I know LA didn't need another guilty conviction on a, on another black man in they in they city, bro, because it would have it would have it would have been burnt down again. Man, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, this country, this great country of ours, yeah, there's always some sort of racial divide, yes, especially over um, when it comes to situations like that. Yeah, um, when I mean situations, situations where. Uh, there was someone black that was hurt. Or yeah. Someone white that was hurt. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes people can come together oh, yeah. and agree that this was just something egregious. Yeah. But sometimes, depending on which race you are, which community yeah. you come from, sometimes people see it differently. And I was at work. I was working in a warehouse when the verdict came down. Mm -hmm. And man, when I tell you when that verdict dropped, man, it was like. The black people were walking around happy, boy, boy. You, I mean, like you would think that, that like the greatest day in the world. Happened. Yeah. And uh, our our Caucasian brothers and sisters, um, they they were they were not happy whatsoever. Yeah. And, and you could feel you could feel the tension in the jaw. Yeah. I say the tension was so thick. Yeah. You could cut it with a knife. That's how it was. I mean, you could feel the tension at our jaw. I don't think everyone spoke together as far as. Um, the white people that were working at my job and the black, I, there, there was no camaraderie yeah. at that time. It was quiet. Yeah. People didn't want to have that discussion. Yeah. Black people were dapping each other up. Yeah! 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 And, you know, the white people were giving us side eyes like somebody threw <laughs> away all the Jägermeister and unseasoned yeah. chicken they could find. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, 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 was <laughs> down, I was down in Albany, Georgia, going to Albany State, and I just remember we all thought he did it. But like, he got away. He got away. He got away. It's about time. Like, people really felt that way. Man, I, I had no, you know, I, I can't remember what I thought at the time. If I thought he did it, or if he didn't, it, yeah. it looked, I will say this: it looked real suspect, though. But but I, I won't get into I won't get into that because at the end of the day, the man was acquitted. Yes, he was acquitted. The man was acquitted. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit, and that's what happened. Man, man today been like a I don't know if you feel it, but today has been like a real laid back. Episode. I mean, it's because like right before the show, man, we heard about Rico, and I, I know that kind of like put a, put a damper on things, the spirit, and it's not. It's just how the energy is. How when we was talking about the waves, it's just I, it's a wave right now going through Atlanta. It's a part, and I feel like it's laid back, and and it's it's it's. I'm I'm sad about it. You know, I knew the guy, and you you know we he, you know we're in the music, bro. And if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, ladies and gentlemen, excuse that loud. Outburst from the other side of the room. 
Aaron watching, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> he going through uh, Rico and them whole catalog right now, reminiscing. <laughs> and, and, and it's all good. It's all it's good. It's all love. Yeah, and so like, it's all love. Yeah, and so like, I have to say he paved the way for me. He, he paved the way for the record execs to accept people like me and you because, you know, before that it was hard for people, young black individuals from Atlanta to, to, to have a name to be able to go directly to the record labels and negotiate um, music deals with them and JD. yeah, JD, uh, all, you know, all the pioneers, of course. If I'm, I'm not trying to like no, no, exclude them, just let's talk about him, yeah. But like, he's a big part, a big part of the reason, you know, big budgets were cut here. He's a big part of the reason, you know, LA Reed, all that, of course, the face, but I mean, that's but Outcast was on the face, you know, he's a big reason why Atlantic Atlanta's music scene. Is, is 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 taking its grip on the music and it seems that we have not let up since because Atlanta music drives the culture Atlanta drives the music culture to this day with QC now with Future with a lot of artists TI back you know all, all Jeezy Lil Baby Lil Darius Lil Darius new new up and coming but yeah you know what I mean 100% but yeah shout out to Rico Way I think that's why it feels the way what we feel and speaking of that Let's go to our next segment. I mean, well, since we're talking about influence, hey man, like, do you want to name top three or you want to say Mount Rushmore in the most influential? Okay, so we have to make sure we listen to the wording. If, uh, do you want to do influential, the Mount Rushmore, the most influential Atlanta athletes, or who do you think were the best Atlanta athletes? When I mean best, it doesn't mean the most athletic. I say, I say influential. Okay. That made an impact on Atlanta sports let's, scenes let's and put us and let's put go. us. All right, all right. My first one, of course, is my, is my favorite Atlanta Falcon, Deion Sanders. Okay. Deion Sanders to this day, can, to, this day. to this day can 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 get social media going, can get you to watch TV, can get okay. you to watch him. So Deion Sanders, Atlanta Falcons number twenty one, Atlanta Braves, World Series. Deion Sanders, man. Okay. For sure. Okay. Um, number two. Number two used to be my favorite basketball player. I know him. I took his sister to the prom. Um, Hold on, so, somebody knocked him out of your favorite. Yes. Well, I gotta hear this. Um, Trey Young. <laughs> I like Trey Young, but Dominique Wilkins, man, <laughs> Dominique, the human highlight hey, film. Man. <laughs> man said Trey Young. <laughs> Took Dominique Wilkins off his list. He did. He did. He it's did. your list, so I can't hate. And, 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 but, 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 but I, I was so Dominique out, man. I, and, young and, over but, Dominique. and I go back and look, and I and I and I just mad at myself because I hated Jordan because of Dominique. And I go back and look, man, I was smoking. Jordan was. Jordan was here, Dominique was here. But at one time, I thought Dominique was here and Jordan was here, and I was delusional. I was delusional. I might be delusional for saying I like Trey Young better than Dominique, but Dominique is high. You know, I always I, I could tell you every dunk he did, every every dunk contest, every major dunk he did. I have it all. I, I used to have a VHS test and when um, tape, and when um, the highlights come on sports, yeah, I, I would I would I would record it, and I had a whole bunch of clips of just Dominique highlights, or Hawks highlights, and yeah. all of it. Man, I, I still got that tape somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, I, I could tell you every dunk he did. I remember one time. Um, Spud Webb threw, it was against the Washington Bullets at the time. Spud Webb threw a half court uh, alley oop. Dominique caught it, clutched it, and dunked it backwards. That was one of the dopest alley oops I've ever seen. Yeah. 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 So, Don. Let's think, think if the Hawks would, uh, would have drafted Carl Malone instead of uh, uh, Concag. Oof. Wow. Because they had the opportunity. Wow. That would have been crazy. Dominique, Carl Malone, that would have been crazy. That's champion. Yeah. And so Dominique Wilkins number two. That's dog. That's dog. That's dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good clip you made. <laughs> Y'all watch that clip. All right, so Dominique Wilkins number two. Okay. All right. Number three. Number three. I gotta go with another Atlanta Falcon. And he was inf influential in good ways and bad. Man, only good. Uh, only, only good. good, only good, man. Only good. All right. Only I, good. I, I gotta go Michael Vick. Uh, okay. Michael cool. Vick. Only good. Michael man. Vick. And the fourth man, I gotta go with old Henry Hank. Hank Boy, Aaron. 
Number 44. I was about to say Trey Young. No. Man, I was, <laughs> was going to walk away from this podcast. Man, we would have had a real argument. If you said Trey was on the hey, top four most influential hey, uh, Atlanta uh, sports athletes. Hey, look, we would have had a little Jerry West, Dwayne Wade argument, man. man. I was about to lose it. <laughs> hey, a lot of people hit me up was like, are y'all friends? Are y'all cool? Yeah, man. That's how we argue, man. We have fun, man. So, yeah. So, my, my, my Mount Rushmore is, is Hank Aaron, number 44. Michael Vick. Damn. De, uh, Deion Sanders. Okay. And who was the Dominique Wilkins. That's my four. That's my Mount Rushmore. That's your Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I, th- I think yours probably close to mine. What you think? I think you're correct. I think if I had to go with the most influential... Then yes, I would have to go with those four. Yes, I would have to go with those four. Yeah. Dominique Wilkins. I mean, when I think about Hawks basketball, still to this day, I think about Dominique. And he put Atlanta on the map. Yes, on the map. I think about. Dominique I take. I take it back. I take it back. Dominique, my favorite. Atlanta, not not Trey. No, no, you're. I take, saying, it I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. No, I take it back. You've been blinded. I, I, I take it back. Dominique's my favorite Hawk, hey, all time Hawk. Blinded. I, I'm sorry, Nick. I'm sorry, April. You've been blinded. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Dominique. I mean, Deion Sanders. Oh man, I mean, I mean, what can you say, man? What I mean, what can you say? Dion, man, wow. I mean, man. Or should I say what can't you say about Dominique Wilkins and Dion Sanders? Man, Trey, the D- D- Dion Sanders first game, he held out the whole preseason. Held out the whole preseason a week before the Falcons had their home opener. We played the Rams. He signed like that Wednesday or Thursday. He suited up. The first punt return he caught, he fumbled it, picked it up. Ran for like 10 yards and got tackled. It was exciting. The second punt return, caught it, fumbled it again, picked it up, and took it to the house. That's how electrifying he made his mark on the first game as a Falcon, <laughs> holding out the whole preseason and still played and scored a touchdown. And, and it's, it had a T-shirt, him high-stepping, high-stepping, holding the ball like, like, it's, a, like it's a beer <laughs> for a touchdown for the Falcons, man. This man had MC Hammer on the sideline at one point talking about too legit to quit. Yes. Yes, <laughs> man. You know what I mean? Yes. Had Hammer all the way from Oakland over here in Atlanta. Talking about too legit to quit. That's that's how it went. <laughs> that's how it went, man. <laughs> that's how it went. Yeah, man. So of course Deion Sanders and hey man, Michael V. Man. Now, now a lot of people probably be mad at me because like I'm a I'm a Matt Ryan fan. I'm a Matt Ryan fan I'm as well. Me fan. too. All you people who hate Matt Ryan, I'm not on your side. I think Matt Ryan was an extraordinary quarterback. I think Matt Ryan was a very, very, very good, good leader quarterback. Very good leader. But, I mean, Michael Vick, man. Like, because I, I, I said that to let you guys know it's possible to love them both. Right? Yes, it is. It's possible to appreciate yes. Michael Vick and Matt Ryan. Yes. That's why I brought Matt Ryan up. Mm-hmm. But anyway, back to Michael Vick. Man, I, I say all the time, man, it's just it just was nothing like watching Mike Vick play. It wasn't. It was exciting. Live yeah, for it. I mean, it was nothing like watching Michael Vick play, man. I mean, it was just like you knew – Every time he touched the ball, something just – something you've never seen. Yeah. And still to this day, we see great plays. Yeah. Still to this day. Vic did some things that I still – man, in that playoff game against Green Bay, when that defensive end tried to tackle Vic, and Vic pushed him off, straightened his face mask up. Oh, I remember he straightened ran, the mask. Then ran by 20, 30 yards – I had never. Yeah, seen I gotta watch that replay again. I remember him straight. I remember him to the time straight in slow motion and yes. straight in front and took off. I was like, dang! Man, I remember that. Man, and it was cold and it was at Green yes. Bay and he was blowing out the cold man, smoke. The first team to ever go in Green, Green Bay, Bay at home and the players at home. I remember that. Yeah, I mean the, the run against. I didn't even know you then. The, the, no, yeah. You no, know, did we know each other? Nah, I didn't know no, you no, then. We had met. Yeah, we, we met. We met the next year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we met the next year or later that. Yeah, year. yeah. Man, when I tell you, when you think about the game against the Vikings in overtime, <sighs> this man breaks on a run, splits two defenders, and they run into it. Boom. Zone. This man runs into the end zone and keeps going. <laughs> the tunnel, man. Game over. Man, I remember where I was. I was with my homie Brent, man. We was, we was, um, we was watching that game, man. It was dope. We was jumping up and jumping. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of great moments, man. I listened to it on the radio. Oh, wow. You didn't radio. see it. Wow. I was sitting in front of BME offices. Yeah. I was in my car with Bo Hagen. I think it was Hagen. It was either Hagen or Rooster. Yeah. Sitting in front of BME old offices yeah. in the West End. Yeah. And we were listening to it on the radio. Yeah. I forgot we had to go do something with the attic. Yeah. I had to leave the house. Yeah. But yes, man. Like, just amazing, man. 
amazing things mm-hmm. that this man was able. Yeah, to do. man. And then when you t- want to talk about Hank Aaron, like you got to give it to Hank Aaron. The yes, man, the man took down took down the babe, man. He took down Babe Ruth. The man took down the babe. You know, a black man. Uh, yep. You know what I mean? And Babe was like that, yeah. Some probably drunk white dude. Yeah, they still got the clip running out there next to him to shake his hand. I, and ain't no telling. They probably they probably thought the man was trying to do something. Yeah, yeah. But he just he just wanted to feel that energy yeah. and celebrate the man as a man. Yes. You know what I mean? So like those four have to go as far as influence. Yes. When, when you think about Atlanta sports, those are the four that you start with. Yes. You have to start with those. Yes. Four. Hey, and, and now to take it to it, and I know we didn't agree to do this. Let's just run it down fast because I know we got to wrap it up. What about the 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 four most influential Atlantans? And I'm saying that because of Rico Wade. Like, who would you put, you know, as as inter- entertainment type of sector? I'm not talking about like the mayors or the governors. I'm talking about. Um, oh, okay. Because I was about yeah. to say, man, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to really dig in. Yeah. And, and, and let's keep and, it like and, simple. And, and, and get my yeah, we can't say Jimmy Carter. Nobody yeah, like that. His people help bring airports. Hill yeah, yeah, yeah. McKay, uh, yeah, Marion like, Young. Really help. Uh, I mean, I could probably like uh, Jimmy uh, Carter, uh, Andrew uh, Young, uh, Ma- Ma- um, um, Maynard Jackson, um, Martin Luther King. That could be quick for. But like, let's let's keep it. You yeah, know, yes, entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All kind of stuff, man. Now, as far as as far as entertainers. Or people from the entertainment business. Yes. Okay. I, I want to ask this question right before I go. Are we talking about people who were born and raised here? Or people who... Help influence... Atlanta, I mean, you know, like, you could say Ludacris, right? He was he was from, like, Chicago or, or Indianapolis, somewhere like that. I still consider him an ATLian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, like, yeah. Well, well see, I, yeah, in his case, definitely. Usher. Usher's from... I was going to bring up... Usher's from Chattanooga. I was going to bring but up... But he's ATLian. I was going to bring up... L.A. Reed and Babyface. Okay, that's that's cool. As, as, yeah, that's like fair. That's fair. Know, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. We can we we'll get them a pass. By, by, by the time they got here, we we'll get them a pass. What they helped do, yes. wise with LaFace. Yeah, I mean like that that trickled down into what we talking about the Rico Wayne yeah. and all them. They they, they, they yeah. trickled down into some of the things that that were given to JD as far as projects yeah. to produce, and as he was continuing to build yeah. his catalog and build his resume. I mean like like. So, J- all right. So, so, JD. so, so, got, so we got, got we got LaFace, got LaFace, we got JD. You have to got to put him on there. Have to put JD definitely. All right. So we got LaFace, JD. You got two more. Oh, you, you have two more. I mean, man. Well, you got to put Rico on it. You, you have yeah, to I want to put Rico on there. Put, just okay. So I can't just put Rico's face. Organized noise. You got to put. <laughs> organized noise. Organized noise, that whole movement. Outcast, Goody Mob, yeah. organized. So we're gonna put yeah. we're gonna put organized noise. Yeah, I can't, you know, I, the, the, I can't just put Rico by himself away from Ray yeah. and the rest of the guys. Yeah. Those guys. So so yeah. so 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 the movement that Rico and those guys started, we're gonna put organized noise right there. Yeah. We're gonna Dungeon put a family. Dungeon Family. Yeah, yeah. so so yeah. that, that all, all that falls all that falls. So that's so that so, so that's fair. So 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 the Dungeon Family influential, that's I, I can accept that. LaFace and, and J J D so so death records. All right. When it comes to entertainment. Yeah. Now, who's the fourth? The fourth. Jeez. I got my fourth. I got it. I know who I'm going to say. Jeez. Jeez, that's tough. You, you, you got you to gotta go. Shouty. You got to go. ATL, shouty. It's the king. You got to go tip, man. You got to go tip, man. You got to go tip. You got to go Grand Hustle tip. He did a lot of great things. Who who could you who could I'm, you name? I'm, try, I'm trying to think, but I, I I don't think it's clear cut that that, 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 that I, I I don't think it's clear cut that All right. it has to be. Well, I, I'm Grand Hustle, so I kind of I kind of I'm, I'm kind of biased. So so who? I'm I'm thinking like I'm I'm thinking, but like I said, I I, I I'm not saying it's not. No, him, no, I got you. But I I don't think it's just clear cut that that tip and Grand Hustle goes. <laughs> In, but in but see we we spot. so we put a lot of other people you could name into organized North Dungeon Family because you could have named a lot that came out of that. Yeah. So so that takes that takes a lot of competition away from Tip. You take you take So So Def JD, and 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 and, and what was the um, LaFace Records? So I mean, who else was I mean, influential? I mean, I mean so. But Greg Street. I mean, Ryan Cameron. The, the Ryan King. 
Hey, I mean, now, 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 I could honestly put Ryan Cameron Dennis above Austin. Like that. That's why I'm telling oh, you. Man. I, 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 me personally, mm. I can't waterfalls in there. Dallas Austin was responsible for Monica. Man, you, you got Dallas Austin. You got Ryan Cameron. You got. You know you got, what? You know what? You know what? You got, you you got Greg Street. You know what? You got. You got who? Well, we, 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 we already put JD. Yeah, we already, yeah, we, we, we already put JD. In. Hey, you know, we got to give it to Ryan Cameron, man. Ryan, we got to. V103, Hot 97. He he paved the way. Um 107.9. And 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 and, 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 and he put he put he been on movies, drumline, other movies. Um and he and he and he supported all the artists we we're naming. Supported them and and fought for them to get their rights and and, and to get them known. So salute to you, Ryan. You're part of my Mount Rushmore of influential music, Atlanta entertainers, man. Straight up, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna send this I to say, him. Man, him, I mean Dallas Austin, like I, I you know like, I, I want to say Dallas. Austin, Austin, I want to say Tip. Like, how, how many records did Dallas Austin do on TLC first album? Man, he did like, a lot, bro. Man, he, did, he did Waterfalls. Did, 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 did. You know what I'm saying? He like, did Waterfalls. I mean, Waterfalls, one of the most successful albums I come out of Atlanta. I mean, like records, on, yeah. Like, come on. You know, did Monica? Saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, come but on, I, I, I I feel you. But I gotta come go. With, on, I gotta man. go with the Ryan King, man. Ryan Ryan's been a he he the, the announcer at the Hawks, <laughs> the announcer at the Falcons. I mean, I mean, he's the he, voice he, of Atlanta, man. I mean, look, I mean, I, I brought him up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I but I didn't think about him. So yeah, you know. But I'm just saying, I'm not even debating Dallas Austin with him. Uh, I'm just saying, like, there's so many. Many great. People, yeah, yeah. You gotta give him that know, kudos. And, and like I said, it's it's. it's it's no knock to tip and what tip accomplished, but as far as that, there are people who laid the foundation yeah. before tip and and Gucci and and a lot of yeah. Luda and a lot of the other guys. Yeah, were I mean, to you got to think thing. about Shaka, them. You got to think about QC. You got to think about those people. But I mean, they the, these people paved the way for 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 for, for, for yeah yeah. So now nah, I agree. So so 100%. so 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 we say, the face records. So so Def Jermaine Dupri. Organized uh, noise dungeon family, and, and do we agree, Ryan Cameron? And then, then too, even though Tilt became a big star later, I mean, Tilt first album came out under the face. Oh yeah, K shout out to KP for sure. So I, I give it to Ryan, man. That, that's that's the for you. Do, I'm, do, not, do. I'm not mad at putting right. Ryan in there. All right, cool, cool. I'm not mad at putting Ryan in there. All you right, know, we 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 could go to news people, man. Shout out to Monica Kaufman. I know <laughs> John Pruitt. You know what I'm saying? You know what, what was the what was the um the weatherman on uh, channel, channel two? <laughs> I forgot his name. <laughs> we all know him. The weatherman, the the, 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 the white dude. Um, I can't I can't I can't think of his name. Yeah, right I can't think of his name. Right David now. Klein. So I don't know. Man, but that that was that, that that was a good a good exercise as far as like you know, just giving love yeah. to, to the hometown. Yeah, right? for sure. For the people who are not from here who are listening. You know, I hope you guys see the pride that we have in our city. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope you guys understand the pride. The water boys. City. The same pride that I know you guys have in your city or wherever you're from, wherever you're living at this time, man. We just, we love our city, man. If you've ever been to Atlanta, I'm sure you had a great time. A great time. You know what I mean? But before we go. What are we going to do? Before we go, man. Man, I have to. We have to, man. We've we been on such a chill moment. And yeah, yes, 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 he passed away. But let's celebrate this man here today. Man, I'm talking about a visionary. Man, I'm talking about one of the leaders of the Dungeon family. I'm talking about one of the leaders of Organized Noise. Yes. I'm talking about help bring you out, Cass. Good him all. I'm talking about go down the line, man. Cool Breeze, Witch Doctor. Let's continue to go down the line. I'm talking about Rico Wade. <laughs> yes. I'm talking about you should throw those parties, man. They used to do so much big stuff in the city and just be on the radio with Greg Street and Ryan Cameron. Man, as a young man wanting to rap, man, I used to be like, oh, my God, can I meet Rico Wade <laughs> one day, man? I just want to salute you there sir you put it down for the city of atlanta yes. millions of records sold i'm talking about producing cultivating and helping these artists become the stars that they are today yes. so rico way i know right now you are up in heaven already getting your studio set up and getting ready to put out another album up there <laughs> in heaven, man so i want to say rico way you sir will be missed but you have always been balling, balling on, on the 30th floor, floor.